Welcome to Tigers Untapped, a Bluff City Media podcast. Stepping up to the microphones are your hosts, Trey Lasley and TJ Willis. Pull up your chair, grab your favorite brew, and enjoy the conversation. Now, let's get to the show. What is up, brothers? Look who's back. Back again for episode special, 81. Special teams, special players, special teams, special players. Special plays. Oh, God. I was so close. Kidding. How was the beach? <sighs> Almost died. Shark Here's attack? Uh, close. I had a jet ski fall on top of me. Excuse me? Yeah. With my daughter. Like out of the, like out of my the sky? Out of the sky, a jet ski fell. It's crazy. Yeah. No, what happened? What? Well, I was out in the middle of the ocean with my daughter. Turns out it was a double red flag day. Nobody knew because the 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 mm-hmm. beach rental place didn't tell us. Got out about 45 minutes outside in the bay of the Gulf of Mexico. We were out there balling, having fun. One of our jet skis broke down, so we were kind of circling it to like, you know, make sure everybody was okay. It was a bunch of kids out there, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm on the jet ski with my daughter and I'm over there just hanging out, making sure everybody's okay. Next thing I know, a big wave comes through. I go over, lands on top of me, lands on top of my daughter. I was stuck out in the middle of the ocean for about 45 minutes waiting to get picked up. (laughs) That would only happen to you. It was what? Who, who came and got you? Uh, the, apparently the owner of the jet ski rental place came out and got us. We had pinned our location to him. Like, about 45 minutes before he came out there and we had like what do, you, what do you mean apparently what do you mean you said apparently the owner of the jet ski place came and got were you unconscious <laughs> i just woke up just came out of the out of the, the i was in a coma for a while no i'm just playing no it was scary though i mean it you know obviously concerned about my daughter making sure she was you okay helmet. you guys have helmets on no helmets just life jackets hmm. <laughs> wow well, glad you're all right. I'm good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. What uh, what size inseams did you go with? <laughs> so I've lost a little bit of weight since January, and so I had to go get new bathing suits. And I, I hope got, Tracy got you one of those dissolving bathing bathing suits. She did. No, I'm just like, um, now nah, I got some pretty. I got some. I had to get some different bathing suits and. In my previous days, I'd gotten kind of gotten attached to these like baggy, like umbro looking, mm. like mm. you know, baggy stuff. Okay, umbro, um, wow. s- skater, skater, uh, bathing suits. This time yeah. I got some five and a half inches, five and a half inch inseam. Yeah, well, I went, I went short with it. What brand? I don't know. I got them at Kohl's. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm well, not a fancy. Use that, fancy use that Kohl's fancy. cash. I did, I did. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't been in into a Coles in a little bit. I'm not a fancy Nancy man. I don't need the super oh, expensive yeah, stuff. I just need no, stuff to don't. cover me. Yeah, just hit up a Walmart, get you a good yeah, bathing suit. What are we talking about, Timothy? What do we got on tap tonight? We are working with, and I've already opened mine. You guys were just chit chatting. I was like, I want a beer. Uh, Ferris forty five. Sorry about that. Ferris 45 from Crosstown. This is an amber ale. I'll show you, but my koozie won't come off. A bit. This is a mashup can with the Metal Museum. So it is. Uh, uh, it is amber. That's for Crosstown. sure. It is ambery. Bell is that bad news? Tennessee Volunteers just won a national championship. It's baseball. What are you do? America's pastime. They did it. <laughs> They did it. Wow. I wonder what that... How's it make you feel? A little sad? No, I think I'm... I think I'm happy for them to experience some success. It's been a rough go at it for them. Let me be real honest. I have zero interest in college baseball. I don't know what... I don't either, but I I was sitting here thinking about about it. it. I don't know. And we've talked about, like... Memphis baseball at times. I was trying to think, mm-hmm. like, would I be like, what would I be like? If they went to the Cultural Series, I'd be freaking out a little bit. 
Yeah. Oh, sure. And then I That's thought I sport. thought back to how intense I got during these press two NCAA women's soccer tournaments and us making the sweet 16 back to back years. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I would be all in. I would, I would, mm-hmm. if we made the college world series, I'd be all in on it. I think. Sure. I probably would not have watched a whole lot throughout the season, but once we got there and we were on the run. Yeah. I'd be in. Buying you time until football season. You know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of. Comparing Speaking to- of. Last- Last year, it was um, there was a report that came out that um, Seth Hennigan was the better quarterback than um, Milton Joseph Tennessee, Milton. Jo- Joseph Milton. Um, who's Tennessee's quarterback this year, and will Seth be better than him? Nico. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't Nico get a uh, fat nil deal? Nico, I'm a Lama Leva. I'm butchering that. Um, Lama Levy. I don't know. Lama what do you? It's kind of hard to compare the two, right? Really, Seth's a third year starter, fourth year. Well, he will be a fourth year. He's only started for three. First, a guy. I don't know if Nico's thrown a pass, so don't even let me lie to you here. Live. I think he. Yeah. I think he might have done it last last season. I think he might have come in and thrown a little bit of a little something. Uh, let's I'm see sure what yeah, Nico's, Nico's right the, at, here, so the athletic thrown. the athletics reporting the five star recruit in the class of 2023 signed an agreement with Tennessee that could pay him more than eight million dollars by the end of his junior year in college. I mean, he was like the number one class, number one quarterback in the class. I think probably a couple years ago, um, he has thrown passes 28 to 45 for. your 314 yards, two touchdowns. I don't know. If, wow, he's thrown 45 passes? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, 45 passes. Hmm. Who did those come against? I'm going to I'm gonna pick Seth in that one just due to the fact that, ooh, what? Our offense is set up to throw more passes. It just kind of is. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, he went 12 of 19 versus Iowa, which is where, um, yeah, with three touchdowns. Oh, was that in their so bowl game? Throw it. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah, okay, I remember that. He made that he started that game. Um nine of twelve versus Vandy, five of nine versus UConn, O of two versus UT UTSA, and two of three versus Virginia, if you're wanting to know where those passes came from. So Seth will have a better year, as will the Tigers program. Yeah. But while we're on the rap. topic, what? No, go ahead. You got what? Nothing. While we're on the topic of outstanding quarterbacks, <laughs> Timothy, what an absolutely electric weekend for the Look Alive 25 class. With is it? Are we calling him AJ? I've seen people call him AJ. I don't. What's he go by? Yeah. Antoine, I think he goes by AJ. AJ. What does Quavo call AJ? him? Ne- nephew. Can we call him nephew? Can we just adopt Quavo's? I mean, mm. yeah, if we can. I'm probably not going to do that. AJ. <laughs> just try it out. Know. Just test it out and see how it feels, TJ. Just say one. Just next say one. Nephew. <laughs> yes. No. It felt it's good. A little, it? Be honest, a little more pizzazz. <laughs> you got to have some swag to it, man. <clears throat> I, it's hard to have swag when I have a pull in my shirt. Look at this. You can't oh, see this. No. I I admittedly tried to fix it this morning and made it and significantly worse. Made it much worse. Oh no! Yes, you can't see it. Trey pulled it and fibers like went. I mean, it sounded like his shirt. shirt ripped in half. Yeah. And then this is the first. That was at about nine thirty this morning, and TJ and I haven't mm-hmm. spoken since. This is the first time we've talked to each other. It's rough. I just turned around and walked the other direction. Yep. Uh, your shirt might be looking kind of ratchet, but your hair looks amazing. I just want to throw that out there. As always, it's become a weekly trend. Guys, forget that hair. hair. Yeah, forget it. What are we talking about? Your five-star hair. We got the highest rated quarterback to ever commit to the University of Memphis Tigers in Antoine Hill. 6'5", 215, Houston County QB, class of 2025. Top 15 overall quarterback in the country, 174th national just overall player. Chose the Tigs over Florida. 
Timothy, how big is that? I mean, you want to hear these? You want to hear these numbers? His last two years in high school football. Yeah, let's go for it. Throwing for over seven thousand yards, nearly seventy percent completion, seventy-one touchdowns <laughs> in his sophomore and junior season combined, with only that's get this, absurd. eight interceptions. And that's not. We're not talking about St. George's ECS Division football, two A private school. We're talking Georgia 6A. I mean, that's some ball yeah. they're playing down there. Yeah, I mean, I I think if you're in the Discord, you know my thoughts and feelings on it for the most part, but the optics of a four-star quarterback, number, what was he, 12th quarterback in the class? Yeah, 247 has him as the 12th yeah. overall QB in the class. Uh, top 200 nationally as a rated player. I mean, that's... The optics alone show you that, hey, Memphis is a player. Memphis can bring in these guys, especially with Peyton Joseph right around the corner. I think uh, his teammate, obviously AJ's teammate. Um, Nephew's teammate. Nephew's teammate, yes. Uh, I don't know what he is rated off the top of my head, um, but it's it's right around there. He's a four-star interior offensive lineman down to Memphis and Florida State. Uh, I think he's committing next week. Is that next week or two weeks from now? July no, next week. Yeah, yeah, next week. Um, so, I mean, you're you're looking at a chance of getting two four stars in the same class, and you know, not that it's like unheard of, but if you think back at AAC teams that have had multiple four stars, I mean, you may have gotten like a, a Cincinnati team back in the day, like probably twenty twenty one ish. But that's probably about it, you know. And we're we're just talking is, about multiple, right? So, is it's there impressive. anything more American than committing on the Fourth of July? Shout out to mm. Peyton for that. So, what was his his uh, two four seven sports composite is um, eighth interior offensive lineman, um, nationally ranked at one seventy seven. Yeah. yeah, so he's right there with. Wouldn't that put him higher than Antoine? Would he be the highest ranked recruit at that uh, point? What's his score? His score is 93.9309. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he, he would, would be, be higher. higher than AJ. And nephew's only 0.93. That's right. And it's I mean, where it gets kind of goofy. Antoine, because- he's the first domino to fall. This is about to be the best class in the history of ever. Ever. Yeah. Did you see I'll his uh, retweet? His, his quote tweet? No, no. What was his quote tweet? I thought you were about to say his edit because that thing was fire with the freaking dude shipping so many boxes FedEx at the packages. bottom. Are yeah, you serious? I should have had it. I should have had an edit like that when I changed jobs like two months ago. Yeah. No, but he said somebody came out and said something about him him committing between Florida State and Memphis, and he quote tweeted and put Tigers. I mean, come who on, man. quote tweeted? And uh, Antoine. Oh well, yeah, he's trying to recruit his boy. Yeah, you don't you don't recruit your your boy. You tell everybody where he's going. He can't. Look, he can't be. He can't be ruined in his moment. But it is the first domino to fall. Fourth of July is going to be a beautiful day. Now here's here's the thing. You got to keep him committed and get him here on campus, yeah. right? Yeah, I think it uh, plays a deal, but people are talking about promises of handing Antoine the keys next year. Timothy, you're not so uh, so sold on that happening. I mean, look, he he's a true freshman quarterback that they don't typically start. They just don't, right? Outside of out of an injury, Seth Hennigan is not probably Seth, probably not Seth Hennigan that he is today. If an injury didn't go the way it did, right? How often are you running across true freshman quarterbacks that are starting? Where would we be today if Grant Cannell had not gotten hurt and Seth hadn't started? (laughs) Oh, well, I think he probably would have got benched halfway through the season, and we get some form of Seth Hennigan. Grant was awful. Awful. Which kind of brings me to my general point that, like, you can't rely on these stars, right? Because Grant was a four-star. He had incredible He was setting all kinds of Texas records. 
dude, he was like the state record leader in like 99% yeah. of passing Every, records for Texas. And you're like, damn, this guy's incredible. And then he goes to uh, Arizona and he looked okay. Like I know a lot of people hyped him up, but if you watch his highlights, you're like, okay, he just threw a 10 yard slant. Like that's good. I guess he can time that route. Any other pass I've never seen him throw. He's just not been impressive to me. I don't know. So I, Maybe it's just because the potential, because he was six seven, he had a strong arm. He just never put it together. And I, he I loved, think that he loved Memphis. He was going to be here for the rest of his career. Wow. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, sorry. Who anyway, doesn't I love mean, Memphis? Exactly right. Except like everyone who. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I don't know. I, I'm interested. I'm not going to say he's not going to start. I guess it's probably how I should more. I should probably word it that. There's a chance he will start because there is a chance he will start, but I'm not going to put him over Arrington Maiden. I wouldn't put him over Kate Cunningham. If you made me write that in stone today, like if you want to put a $25 friendly wager on it right now, he will not start the season next year. Feel free Game to one. Put some money on that. Game one. You're saying, you're saying he won't start period or just week one. He's not the starter. He will not start week one. He will not be the season starter. No. I can see I know that. just I know he's a a four star, your highest rated quarterback, six five, lays a rocket arm. I get all that, right? It's just the fact that even if he comes in early, you have what seven months to learn a playbook to physically build your body up to be hit by three hundred pound men. It's a little bit different than high school, right? I don't know. It's so what do you think is gonna be like what is the biggest for a quarterback, especially? What is the biggest transition from as you go level to level, high school to D1, D1 to pro? Like, what do you think is the biggest? Uh -oh. What do you think is going to struggle with the most? The playbook or the, playbook. the physicality? Yeah, playbook. No, probably the playbook. I mean, you got to think there's just so much more. Plays are longer, super long winded plays. Um, it, obviously, it just kind of depends on the verbiage that you're used to from your high school playing days versus what is being thrown out. You know, there's a lot of RPO that's a kind of probably blown up a lot more since you know we were in high school kind of situation but i could not imagine having to go in throwing a lot of shorter routes maybe go routes only and then having to completely change the way routes are run based off where guys in the defense are just like this receiver could run a 10-yard dig or he could cut in and you know it just depends right there's so many other factors and, and the way that plays are drawn up at the collegiate level as opposed to high school level. So I'm going to say the playbook. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think, obviously, the NIL played a role. We saw it in the edit with the FedEx packages. Sure. But I think the, the possibility of him earning the starting spot was a big draw as well, with obviously Seth leaving after the end of this season. And no real set – heir to the throne at least right now so it'll be interesting to what happens he wasn't the only commit that we had uh with the look alive 25 class in the last week we got our boy william wee bush i love to take a wee wee in a bush uh tj three-star safety cornerback what you guys don't pee in bushes not often hmm. you don't like to pee outside i do every day I don't know. His last name, Weebush, just made me think that. Sorry about it. Uh, Franklin, Tennessee, 6'1", 185. Number 143 overall cornerback. But I think he's coming as a safety. Right? Yeah. Back there in the back. Ball hawk. Not bad. Yeah. Bumps are, uh, bumps are 247 class rating up. I think those two guys up to like 75th-ish. In the uh, in the niche, the sausage eight, maker say eight about or the nine, roster. Nine commits, eighth overall right now <laughs> for twenty twenty five. What did you just say, Timothy? Since y'all are since y'all are best friends with Bart, can y'all ask him to start doing roster do rankings for football? football? That would be I see him correct the roster ranking, dude. Wild. I just want it to work. You football know? rosters would be intense for sure. That's why we've got our guy Phil Steele. My copy's been ordered. We will have our official breakdown shortly. 
I will say hopefully you know that's what's insane. Hopefully that's delivered FedEx, right? Memphis has nine commits so far. This is all per two four seven because it's just the first one that popped up. Uh, nine commits so far, and they are fourth in the American. Wait a minute, this the math ain't math in here. Something's off. But what it says USF has twenty commits already. That is so a the class insane. of twenty five. Yes. Wow. It has them as 20 commitments. ECU has 18. FAU has 14. So, if anyone goes looking at the rankings for the American and says, hey, Memphis is pulling in these four stars, but it's not really doing much for them, I want you to understand that USF has almost literally I mean, more than doubled. Yeah, they've definitely doubled. Uh, what you have brought in so far. And it's mostly just three stars, guys. I mean, you know, respect. I mean, the biggest thing of the top three, the three teams that are ahead of you that all have double digit commitments, their average ranking per recruit are all, they're all in the 85s. Yeah. You know what ours is? Nearly 89, 88.7. We're getting, which it's quality over quantity, Timothy. That's what we like no, to say it, in the business world. I will Who say this. A train, you, a train is that's in me. somebody's living room. You know that's me. You know I live close to the train. I've never Penn heard State of it before. Penn State has an 89. Technically, it's almost a, a 90. But just giving you a general idea, we have a higher average rating than Wisconsin and Minnesota. They and play football UCLA. out there. Wow. I don't know. Just something to wow. just point out. That's all. The look alive, 25 classes looking alive, baby. Uh, Timothy, we talked about the AD search last week. We thought it was down to four primary candidates. Turns out those four were just a bluff. Sure. Because not long after, they announced three additional candidates, two of which are we are familiar with. We talked about Jeff Crane not being mentioned in the initial release of candidates. He was mentioned in the second wave along with uh adam walker who's at kansas state was previously here at the athletic office um and then gerald harrison i think he's the ad at austin p is that right were the three mm-hmm. that were announced yep. since then there's been reports of the list they've done zoom interviews i think and are moving on to more formal in-person interviews uh and according to two separate sources i think that were quoted by the daily Memphian. The four primary candidates are in no particular order. Uh, our boy Mark Arnott, Albert from Tennessee, uh, Walker, Adam Walker, and Jeff Crane. Which, to be honest, I'm not real thrilled with that list. If that's the final four, to be just to be frank with you. No, man, I'm going to be real honest with you. I was pretty hype on the the Kevin White train personally, and I understand yeah, what he happened. in it. Is he just a terrible Zoom interviewer? What the heck happened? No, I, I think those guys are still in it, right? I, I think what we're seeing here, and it's just my personal opinion, right? You're seeing familiarity come at hand, right? Ryan Alpert, he has ties at Memphis. Mark Allnut has ties with Memphis. Uh, Adam Walker has ties at Memphis. Jeff Crane who honestly I wouldn't be that upset with Jeff Crane. I think he's done a really good he's, job. He, he's, he's done a, yeah. yeah. He's had a lot of transparency throughout this whole process. I think he, um, he's well-spoken. He comes through the whole process as very, you know, much better than his predecessor. I would, I would argue, uh, cause he talks to people in general. Um, I wouldn't be upset with him, but it just, it just feels weird that we're going back old faithful right someone that's been here before guys that we know that honestly haven't really done anything uh elsewhere uh, the mark all yeah. thing blows my mind like i know he's been an ad at, like missouri state and buffalo and he was here but like buffalo has gone to the shitter since he's been there and, and i don't know if that's necessarily a him thing or if that's just hey it's buffalo and no one really you know it's a pro town like who really cares about the university of buffalo athletics at times but um, I, I don't think Ryan Alpert has done enough for me to be even 
be able to honestly build out a resume for him other than the fact that he was once here and people know him, right? And this this team that's been put together, these boosters and, and these school officials, they know these guys. So it, it's to me personally, it seems like they're kind of doing them a favor, just letting you know, like, hey, we're taking this guy seriously. So now the word kind of gets out to feelers. If uh, if a Western Kentucky AD job opens, it's like, well, let's consider Ryan Alpert. You know, this guy's at Tennessee. Um, he's relatively close to us, if you don't get it that way. Um, he was a, a heavy considerate, uh, heavily considered for the Memphis job and just ended up not getting it for whatever reason. So I maybe, you know, in my opinion, it seems like it is a uh, doing them a favor more so than anything. So I, I think when it's all said and ju- done, at this point, I'm counting on Jeff Crane just to remove the interim tag. Uh, just... It's how it's how it's imagine seems. going through a search committee doing all that and then just promoting the man that was interim already. <clears throat> yeah, Ryan Silverfield. Could have, saved, this could, have, could have saved some doll hairs. Do you give uh you give your boy all that a little bit of bonus points for hiring our boy Jeff Limbo up there at Buffalo though? No. Okay. No, I, I give him nothing, big, dude. Big limbo fans. We'll see how that works out though. Love limbo. See. Yeah. So he heads into his first uh his first year. Is it this is off topic. Do you know of any special teams head coaches that have panned out? I don't. That would be a you question. You should, that would be you asking yourself that. Yeah, I just don't know. Like they did this in the NFL. I think the the Patriots did it too, and he was not been good. It does make me sad though, because I was watching. Uh, I was kind of watching back the SMU game from 2019. You know, Antonio mm-hmm. takes that kickoff back to start the second half, and of course, man, they were they were they were calling us special teams. You in that that broadcast saying we were the new Virginia, we were the new age Virginia Tech. We'd returned that was like our 11th kickoff return for a tutty, in like f- the last four seasons or something is what they had said. What a time to be alive that was. Well, just witnessing it greatness. It fell off for a second there. I, I I think White has been better than oh yeah. I'm talking previous years, but yeah, it definitely fell off. I'm just saying for a hot minute, we were literally probably the best special teams program in the country. Far yeah, and away. I think it's fair. 11 yeah. kickoff returns for touchdowns in four seasons. Yeah, that's an absurd real. number. Especially when we've gone 20 years without one. Uh, Timothy, we're going to take a break. You, come on. Before what? we go on a break, do you do you remember our first special team touchdown? Yeah. Tony yeah, Pollard Arthur against Street. Temple. We had our shirts off. It was a whiteout <laughs> on a Thursday night. We were getting rowdy. Uh, I didn't know if you remembered that. Oh, wow. I would never forget. I'm about to pull it up right now. I saw the video. I took a no, the video was from the pick six that Jannard Avery had. That's what we were. But I do. I do not. I will never forget that. Tony Pollard broke the streak. Was it Houston? Like, like the fine. I think we had a. He made for a special teams touchdown. It was either Houston or Cincinnati. Part of me thinks it was Cincinnati. And there's a picture you guys had of me for the longest time ever responding in a weird way. I don't know if you remember that. What do you mean? I don't know. Re- reacting to the touchdown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're off topic now. I was specifically talking about the Temple special teams play, but Such we're good. An amazing play. Let's jump to break. We'll come back and we'll talk all the goodness. All the wild things that were said by Joe Cooper and Penny Hardaway when we come back. On the topic of size, though, the other guy you have low here, I'm going to bring your board back up, is one I think is going to stand out to a lot of people. Yeah. And that is number 14. Yeah. Of <laughs> That's way lower than a lot of people have them. And I know most Grizz fans out there, unless they're Zach Eady fans, are saying if Klingon's there at nine, you've got to pull the trigger. I'm just not big on 
a lot of the bigs, honestly. And I think with Klingon, I think he is what he is. He is very similar to Walker Kessler to me. And Walker Kessler became a backup for a 31 win Utah Jazz team. He looks clumsy to me. He does not finish well. The ball is kind of always flipping around. Uh, and that's just not someone that I'm looking for for the Grizzlies. And anytime, like just kind of a draft rule for me is if he's a big man and he's not elite, I'm not taking him in the top 14. Come hang out with Daniel Greer and Nathan Qualls on Grizz 901 Live every Tuesday night at 901 Live on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. It instantly gave the Memphis Grizzlies organization credibility. What was, what was Jerry West doing moving to Memphis to work for the Memphis Grizzlies? And I, I think it's I think it's the biggest acquisition the Grizzlies have ever made. And I remember him when we were in Memphis and I was here playing, uh, and he was GM, and we played in the summertime, and he said, he brought in Cesare Trebansky. We got done playing, and he was like, well, what do you think? And I was like, well, I just don't think he's an NBA player. He's like, no, I think he's going to be a pro. I was like, well, when we got ready for the next year, Cesar Jabansky was traded with me to Phoenix. So I guess that's how much he thought he and I were going to be any type of have any type influence on the Memphis Grizzlies. <laughs> you want to you give me basketball advice? Who the, who the Grizzlies get back? I was like, Bo Outlaw. Bo Outlaw, that's right, it was. It was... Yeah. Tune in to the Night Court Podcast with your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brevin Knight on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Join Daniel Greer and Nathan Qualls this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the Grizz 901 live draft show. Draft experts Chip Williams Jr. and Ryan Meadows will help the guys break down each pick as they happen. Join us live on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Joseph Joseph Cooper. We hardly <laughs> knew ye. <laughs> and you claim that you weren't trying to throw anybody under the bus. But you went to the Daily Memphian and you told them that it was your time as a Memphis Tiger was the worst experience you've ever experienced in all of your experiences that you've experienced. Mm. It was heartbreaking for him, Timothy. Mm. He and Coach Hardaway didn't even have a relationship, hardly. Mm. That whole thing was wild. What are we uh, just, doing? Why are we making big deals out of walk-ons no longer being a part of the program? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? Why was that an article that was written? I think it was just a situation of a journalist goes to a former player and just says, like, hey, are you coming back? And former he's... player. What and he mean? says, hey, no, uh, I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus or throw shade, but I'm about to throw a whole lot of shitty shade all over everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the that's hell does his, that mean? That was his experience, though, right? I mean, I don't. I don't think his intentions were to shit on Penny or anything like that, but like that was just him explaining his reality. Every quote right? in there, there was <laughs> keep that all to yourself, dude. Nobody like goodness. Gracious. You know what? You know what? One of the things that's funny about all of this with Penny as the head coach, I can't tell you. I couldn't count on probably two hands how many times people have gotten recruited by penny to come to memphis especially memphis kids and there's one kid in particular i'm thinking about that the father's stated goal was to be around his best friend penny hardaway like and was upset that he was not best friends with penny hardaway during the recruitment of his kid and that's why his kid didn't go to school at memphis like, it is a weird dynamic. It is to, to have 
Memphis kids who grew up watching Penny, whose parents, whose father, well, Joe Cooper's stepfather actually played with Penny Hardaway. I'm not saying yeah. Rodney Newsom, that was Rodney Newsom's stated goal. I don't think Rodney Newsom cares, but it is weird to see how many people, how many adult men's response to Penny Hardaway recruiting their kid has been upset, being upset that Penny and them aren't best friends. Like it happens frequently. It's very strange. I don't know. Weirdos. Like I, I get it from Joe's perspective, because if you don't come back, you are a Memphis kid. Everyone looks at you and they start throwing, throwing dump on you, right? They're dumping on you saying you're a Memphis kid. Why wouldn't you want to be here as if it was his decision? So I think proactively he comes out and says like, Hey, look, I'd love to be back. I would love to, but that's not an option. And I was told at the last minute, now it's harder for me to find a new home. Spots are filling up. Like had, had I been told this back in, you know, March, April, whenever, maybe it's a different argument, but we're talking, what was it? The first of June, I think it was something was the statement. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was the first of June, right? I don't remember when it came out. I just know that the dude said, he well, was no, he, he, to see if he yeah. was getting a scholarship and he hadn't heard anything. And I'm like, bro, it's June. If you haven't heard by now and you got other teams reaching out, just get on. Like what do you, I do think I that's the kind it's of easy a, to, that's the sad that's the sad part for me about the whole situation. Everything I read, there was a lot that I read that I was like, this is a nothing burger. Like this is like Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. But the part that I think that I was that I felt bad for Joe on was that he there was time limits in which he could there was dates in which he sure. could enter the transfer portal and had yet to have that cleared up. Right. Like and and have a, a, a an actual, according to Joe, have an actual conversation with his head coach about his role for the team. And it's like going into it. Like, so now he's having to request a waiver to be able to, like, transfer and play. Right. Like that that part of it, I was like, oh, that's rough. Like, that's a rough situation. But yeah, I also kind of agree with you, Trey, in that, man, if. If you're not hearing anything by a certain amount of time you got to take matters into your own hands right like <laughs> yeah but also like yeah. and i guess it's easy to say though he says they didn't have a relationship i'm also i'm just so skeptical that like penny didn't say a single word to him are you serious like you didn't get a text or nothing not you literally got i mean if that's the case then yeah okay i kind of see where he's coming from like at the very least, he deserves the decency of some sort of communication. But I just find that I don't I find that hard to believe that nobody in the program gave him any sort of indication whatsoever that he would not have a scholarship. I don't know. That just seemed. But maybe so. Maybe maybe things are that way over there. Well, if you're a walk on there, a scholarship is not guaranteed to you. I like, know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, but that's what Joe made it sound like he was waiting on is like to see if he would be able to be on a scholarship this year. And well, be a yeah. part I mean, of was he ever, did he ever, I mean, did he mention in the article with Parth that he was promised a, a scholarship and then didn't receive one? No, he, he just, just, he just said he knew like everybody else had been having exit interviews. He hadn't had his yet. He'd had the other coaches reaching out, asking him about coming to play for them. And he's like, no, I'm, you know, I want to see what's left here for Memphis and, if I'll have the opportunity, whatever, you know, and then basically just said, yeah, he's been that he, bad of a situation. If he he's found willing, if, right, that's what I'm saying. There's no way it was the worst experience of all your experiences. If you wanted to come back that like you entered the portal the day the season ended and be like, I'm out of here. This was the worst thing that I've ever been a part of. So I don't, I don't know. It's just, it was just, it was weird. And then to also try to come out and be like, I didn't mean to throw shade on anybody. I'm like the whole thing was shade. You're trying to make it sound like the shittiest I mean, nothing in that article was good. You were trying to throw shade over the whole program and everything. The worst experience of everything you've ever experienced, that's all shade. Exactly what you were doing. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're Peace be with you, Joseph Cooper. At best, uh, a very low-level scholarship player he was good in the time that he did play it was just very limited good. And, okay he's decent in the okay. time he played. yeah very limited but 
Uh, in other news, we talked about Glenn Taylor. I think it was Rothstein came out and said he was supposed to be visiting Memphis. That got canceled because supposedly our boy Glenn Taylor Jr. is asking for $400 million as a guy that averaged four and two. Less. He's ever, he's asking for Nico Malama Lama Lama Lama's contract with yeah he wants eight milli over four years so he can throw up four points and two and a half rebounds in twenty <laughs> minutes a night. I will what say, a down bad situation, he's got some right? Leverage. Does he? Does he have leverage? <laughs> he has he just, some leverage. Did you see what he tweeted out today? No. He said back oh, to the gosh. drawing board. <laughs> like, oh really? <laughs> go out there and look it. And go out there and look at the wings. Go look at the wings that are out there uh, and, and the transfer portal right now. I mean, he's not the he's not the worst one out there. He's not. I think he has some players. He's here. also obviously not worth the price that he's asking for. Seems oh, to be a thing, little dude. ridiculous. You don't come out of the gate and say, "Hey, I want ten grand." And then, so I'm like, okay. And when you could have like, damn, I could have had 90, right? You just come out with this high number and see what they counter with. Maybe they'll come back and be like, maybe not. Well, in this case, we countered like, with a, and these, see you later. Maybe UPS is looking for some NIL deals. <laughs> yeah. Who's UPS taking care of? What score are they affiliated with? Oh, Louisville. <laughs> uh, Louisville. Are they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where their headquarters is. I mean, if they got involved at the school, but they're not in the NIL game. Maybe he brings his his price down to a more reasonable reasonable uh, amount, and we get a uh, sick Glenn Taylor FedEx edit. Dow Fox is everywhere. What a which leads me situation, man. (laughs) We're sitting here talking about wings, and obviously David Jones hasn't come back today. I think it was today. The basketball team. Put out a edit, just a kind of a reminder, honestly, because it feels like a lot of people have forgotten that PJ Haggerty is on this ball club, and he's the future. Smart. Have people forgotten about like, is that our yeah. new David yes. Jones, PJ? Except for he's going to be able to lock down on the defensive side. And he can. I mean, people what, have what forgotten the first freshman in. The last 30 years to average 21, five rebounds, three and a half assists, and a steal and a half a game. Get your tickets freaking today. I got to say, I've been loving seeing these edits and pictures and stuff of the team working out already. It's been I good just stuff. Love seeing the team assembled more That's than what a I'm month saying. before the season starts. You get them in there, there's pictures of them arm locked. On the sideline, you get the huddle after practice. Like, there's some bondage going on. There's some bond, sure. some some bonding going on. And this isn't Arkansas. There's some bonding going on uh, <laughs> come, come in on. That, that locker room. But for real, I'm in, yeah. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I'm excited. I think this team is going to be locked in, bought in on the defensive side, and they're going to surprise some people because I'm seeing a lot of people. They don't have a whole lot of confidence in what this roster looks like right now. And I think they're going to be better than some people are anticipating them being. What do you mean by that? Mean by what? Which part of it? That people don't have confidence in the roster. Like where, where is the lack of confidence at? Like at I've just seen people, is- they're not excited about what we've got. They think what we brought in is, is uh, it's not up to par. It's not a talented roster. That's silly. Not a team yeah, that be able to win the American or make a tournament. If anything, I think this is one of the more balanced teams. I think that's what I'm saying. I think this is going to be a better overall basketball team than what we've grown to. Uh, sure, you may not have team ceiling thing, talent right? wise, but that's what I am saying from a team aspect and guys playing for one another and with each other. I think this will be up, up there with that Kendrick team. Guys buying in and knowing what their roles are and playing well together. The more I kind of think about it, I guess I understand where they're coming from because last year's team was pretty balanced. Like it should have been in theory. And for a bit there, don't get me wrong, for a bit there it was. And then just shit hit the fan. And it wasn't 
let's play for Memphis. It, it was more so like, let me get mine. Let it me kind of felt that me. way at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this team's going to be a, a, lot, a, team. a lot more we over me. And I know we're going to talk. I know we're going to talk about this. I'm getting. I know we're going to talk about this in a second, but I think we also and and none of us knew this was happening during the season. But I think there was also quite a bit of distraction on Penny's side last year during the season with his mom being sick. Right? Like, like I think that's a fair statement to make that that during a lot of that like really bad time for the Tigers was also a really mm-hmm. bad time for Penny personally, which if you're dealing with somebody who's like, your, your, your mind is going to be elsewhere. You're going to be thinking about yeah. other things and doing other things. So I think, I don't think that that's an unfair, like critique, not even critique, but, but like analysis of what was going on last year, <laughs> you know, like it's a fair thing to say. Yeah, man. Like Penny was distracted too. He had a lot going on. Just yeah. None of us, none of us knew about it. So none of us knew to like help frame that narrative. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Which rolls perfectly into, uh, I mean, what made headline? What was it? Thursday it came out. Friday, the uh, the radio appearance that he had on the Taylor Made Sports Show with Marcus Taylor, or Penny. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I don't know that a lot of it. He said Penny said some things, but a lot of it was Marcus Taylor saying things 100%. for Penny, for in Penny a way. Hardaway. Yeah. Yes. Um. But Kenny, to your point, yeah, I don't. I think people knew at least towards the end of the year when he mentioned his mom being sick and battling throat cancer, I think it was and different things, but like he really opened up about, it. I, I, I don't know that anybody knew about his mom having a stroke mid season. Nobody. He, he gets, leaves a shoot around, goes home to find his mom on the floor and then yeah. had to basically leave her to still go coach a game. It's crazy. Like I, I can't, it puts things into perspective. It's just like, some things are more important than basketball. And so, yeah, to your point of him being distracted or focused on taking care of or the health of his mother, like totally understandable, 100%. So no wonder a part of him probably feels personally attacked. But the other side of that to you, so like I think if that had been out, and not to, I'm not saying he should have put that out, like totally. No, family, absolutely not. Privacy, we, whatever. I'm just saying, had it been out and people known that, I think he would have been given a lot more slack for what had occurred during the season. It would have provided a a, a full, like full view of what was happening. Of what right? was right, just right. Context, it makes things yeah. make a little bit more sense and understandable. Yeah. Um, but I. And it was at the. I still I think it was at the end of the season where Penny was just kind of like, I'm just ready to get this season over with. And you kind of took Wichita it State as game. like, yeah. yeah, like I am tired of these fucking guys. It's kind of how you <laughs> took it, right? But in reality, yeah. it, it yeah. was really just like the the losing, the the hot streak, the losing. Um, yeah, it mom. was everything. It's just so yeah. much at once. Like I, I get that now. And I think it makes a little bit more sense. As all. Just a bad year all around. Yeah. I still don't think that he's being – personally attacked no no i mean i i think it's fair to critique some of the things that have happened and things that are going on um and i don't think it had that means that it's personal i i think whoever is in that position would be getting the same criticism about those things so i don't think it's personal to penny um but i'll just say i put it in the discord nothing but support for me from now on He's our guy as long as he's here. Positive vibes only. Vibes are high. This is going to be the best team we've had team-wise under Penny Hardaway in his seven years. Going to surprise some folks. That's where I'm Can at. I just say this? Can I say this about the Penny's comments and just kind of the, 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 the blowback that I think a lot of people are receiving about it? I genuinely think that Penny would be best served by having people around him that protected him better like and and when I, I what i mean by that is giving him like sound advice in terms of you know how to respond to these kind to, to critique to like normal critique that happens being the the coach of a division one program that's number one number two 
shielding him from that local media critique. Like, yeah, I know for a fact that he's got people in his camp that that send him information that think oh. people say about him. That is absurd. If that's happening, if you are if you are close, listen, I know Penny. We know you're watching Penny's friends. We know you're watching as well. If you are Penny's friend, stop sending him that shit. Stop it. Like there's, no, there's nothing positive. No matter what anyone says, there's nothing positive, good or bad. Right. Like it should nothing beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that he said in that interview, like, and at least initially at the beginning, he was playing as if he didn't know, like the whole grind city media thing. Right. I think Marcus initially right. brought up Grind City Media. He was like, why are you talking about the Memphis Tigers when you're a Grizzlies affiliate media company? And he's like, I don't even know what that. I'm like, bro, yes, you do. You know what Grind yes, City do. Media is. Absolutely. And then it says things like he doesn't let it affect him. But I'm like, well, this whole interview, you 100% <laughs> do. You're saying that they're personally attacking you. Like, if you truly didn't care, then you wouldn't even give it a thought, the time of day to even talk about it. But to Kenny, your point, like, don't send him that stuff. There's nothing, nothing beneficial comes from that at all. Right. Right. At all. 100%. Like, just ignore and, it and just do what you need to do. I don't know. You know, like, I know it's easier also, said than done, but I yeah. agree with you. Block out the freaking noise. Like, delete whatever you have to do. Block people if they're sending you a stupid Bluff City Media clip that TJ's shitting all over <laughs> yeah. your Listen. substitution patterns. <laughs> Yeah, who cares? Like, who cares? Who isn't? Who isn't? Who cares what we have to say other than the people yeah. that listen to us? Yeah. What we yeah. have to say has no impact on what on Penny Hardaway and what he does. Yeah, we're just here critiquing it. Now, the third thing I would say: no. so he needs to have people. He, <laughs> the third thing is he's gotten a lot of heat for the the golf the golf course interview or the golf course availability. The, the, I'm the on his side for that. I'm on his side, a hundred percent. My here's my response to it. But I'm a big golf guy. So. Yes, you are. You would have been on. You you're trying to caddy him. Um, Just here to golf. Yeah. yeah. If there is absolutely nothing wrong with Penny Hardaway going to media liaisons and saying, "I don't want to talk about this," right? Yeah. I want to play golf today. There is nothing wrong with him saying that. He was done a disservice by, and I'm going to say it, he was done a disservice by Harold Grader for allowing him to be put in the position to have to still answer those questions because that availability was not, he has contractual obligations to have availabilities as a University of, of Memphis them. employee, and that was absolutely not one of them. And if you are in a headspace, every you, he is... Mark, Marcus Taylor was on Anthony's show. We did a special episode of his of of Anthony show Anthony Sane's show today, where Marcus was talking about. We we talked to Marcus Taylor from the Taylor Made Sports Show, and one of the things that he said that I agree with hundred percent is he is not just Penny Hardaway. He is Anthony Hardaway. He is a real human being, right? I agree with that. I don't think anybody. I think everybody needs to understand sure. that as well. Um, and. There are days where Kenny Stubblefield wakes up in the morning and is pissy and doesn't want to do like has a bad morning or has a bad night or has whatever. And and I and I don't want to have to if you were to put a microphone on my face during that time, I would probably have snapped off too, right? But the fact that 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 media obligation, that availability went through, that they kept that going and allowed him to stand in front of a bunch of microphones and cameras after having explicitly stated, I don't want to talk about basketball, that to me is doing your head coach a disservice. He's yeah. like, got to be better all the way through and through. Yeah, I'm probably going to get I mean, a phone call about that. But that, I'm just saying like that, that to me is, is very important. Yeah. Uh, but I also like, if they hadn't immediately started hitting him with basketball questions, like I said, and started talking about the golf tournament or the opportunity to get out and get away, like mentioned basketball, but like there, I know there's a lot going on, but how nice is it to get out and just enjoy TPC Southland today? Like, right. Maybe he, you know, 
Penny's not going to just say, hey, F the media. I don't want to talk to him at all. But he clearly stayed like, hey, yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll make myself available. But I don't want to talk about basketball. And then immediately the first questions, I don't remember. Was basketball. it freaking Jason? Hey, how are you since the season ended? I mean, come on, dude. Like, were you not just told he's not talking about basketball? And then the first thing you do is start asking basketball questions. But again, I don't blame the media for that. I don't blame those writers for that. You are putting the head basketball coach of a Division I university in front of a microphone of dudes who are beat writers for the basketball program. Of course That's they're going to ask fine. those questions. Then, but how simple is it to follow instructions? Like you've been told he's not talking basketball. Okay, if you're the beat writer, well, all right, then I'm not going to – I don't – I just – I guess it Again, goes ways. Maybe I he just shouldn't say, have been available if he was in that yeah. mood, but I'm also like you were clearly told he's not talking basketball, and then you immediately ask him a basketball question over and over I feel again. You. Like I feel you how that. dumb are you? Like I would be annoyed as hell too. Yeah. I'm taking time out to still talk to you guys. I've said I don't want to talk about basketball, and then you bombard me with basketball questions. Well, because then, because then the narrative is switched, right? And 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 I haven't, I have not heard it, but I was told that immediately that following day, the meeting after that golf course availability, local radio show, big time show in the city of Memphis, who has trashed Bluff City Media publicly, so, um, came out and really said straight up down there came out and straight up said, does Penny Hardaway want to be the head coach of the University of Memphis basketball program? Because he got pissed off about an interview or a, a an availability at the golf course. Right? Wait, who are like, you talking about? Why can't good, you just bro. say it? <laughs> no, Jeff Calkins. Jeff Calkins comes on the radio show, his radio show the following morning and says, does Penny Hardaway even want to be the basketball coach at the University of Memphis? All because he of that availability. shit about Blood City? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody else on that station love. I mean, Jason and John, you got Gabe. Who gives yeah. a shit what Jeff says? He doesn't even do sports anymore. And he asks dumb effing questions all the time. <laughs> I will say, so, yeah. The only thing... Go ahead. No, you got it. Now, me I legitimately up. didn't know that. that. I, I wasn't trying to just get you to say a name. I literally had no idea what radio station you're talking about. I did not know that. Jeff Calkins hated Bluff City Media. Right. That's legitimate. I did not. I'm serious. I did not know that. No, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. TJ, what were you going to say? No, no, no. I was just going to say like the, I guess it's more so backtracking now, but just the the one thing that Penny said in that whole argument with Taylor right. made was um, the Tigers are going to go down hard after I leave. I didn't. It's a rough statement. It's a rough statement. Yeah. I, it, that kind of felt like a shot at us as fans as at the university and like also like what do you mean by that like i i mean i can see i don't i don't mean to seem like a dick when i say we, this but like two tournament visits in six <laughs> years isn't like yeah. yeah you know what i mean like we were obviously he we were better now than when he got here right, right. he's and i think that's it, i think but. that's what he's alluding to is like y'all saw what it was like before i came in the tubby years is the fans are falling off. Nobody cares. There's apathy. You're not making shit. You're not getting players. I think that's yeah. what he was trying to like go to. But I'm also like, dude, we would be able to hire. Some, like, we're not going to fall off the face of the earth. Sure, there may be a dip. We may, you know, like, yes, you're important to the city in this basketball program. But I think we would be able to continue to move forward. I don't think we would just crumble and die. And TJ's mouthing things. Mouthing fake. He's no, fake I was, muted. <laughs> I was going to ask a question, but I'm not trying to piss everybody off like Anthony. Say it. Ask it. I said, which brings me to my next question. Is Memphis a mid-major? <laughs> We're not talking about this. What's next on the agenda? Penny's comments. Oh, the last thing. We haven't even talked about it. Since Glenn, I'm legitimately, I'm not, I'm not addressing the question that TJ's asked. It's Kenny, absurd. Kenny. Kenny. Yes. Yeah. Is Memphis I'll, a I'll, major? I think that might be, and and I, I don't want to. Okay. So the interview with, or I, the conversation with Anthony will have already been had by the time this comes out. I think it's the dumbest conversation ever because it, it doesn't completely, matter. It's completely moving the goalposts from the expectations that were set. Guess who set the expectations? Penny Hardaway set the expectations. 
like national championships, tournament runs, number one classes, best defenses, those things. That's what he has set the expectation at. And so now that those things aren't coming to fruition, now it feels like a gaslighting type of question to say, well, then you're just a dumbass for having those expectations, right? Because that's not what Memphis yeah. is. Like, what is like what is a high major, mid major? What's the criteria for that? Like, what, what is it? Mean, like, what are you it technically? I it has a power conference. I think technically is what draws the line. But yeah, do we play in a mid major conference? Yes. As as an overall program, would we be considered a mid major? No, we're consistently ranked in the top thirty programs historically. That's not mid major. When there's three hundred and something odd Division One programs, a top thirty program is not mid major. Okay, but and this is where we differ because I'm not trying to reference. 1970s in my argument here i think if you were to look at memphis in a more relevant time time frame they're they're probably more likely mid-major than they are anything but that's, that's just, fine in the what, last what 10 years sure years? we've underperformed but as a whole years, of the program you've played in the last 30 years if you want i think it would probably still be a mid-major in the last 30 years it's a mid-major probably yeah i mean i don't know i'd have to look at the numbers but it probably counts as mid-major, yeah. By what? I mean, again, I don't even know. What's the criteria, criteria for that? Like, what's the criteria? Well, I just think it's I think it's easy to say that because, like, like look at blue bloods, right? Like, who are the blue bloods mm -hmm. out there? Like, what are what what has been what the that title of blue blood was passed on to a, a few different schools, and in what way? Like, what was that criteria for that? Like, like is UCLA still a blue blood? Yeah, I think that stuff changes, though. That's kind of my point, though, right? I think if we're, if we're talking about Memphis is not a mid-major from a holistic standpoint of how long they've been a program till now, like the, the age of their program to now, yeah, they're probably not. Like, I think it, uh, to Trey's point, it, it many publications probably have them in the top 35 programs all time. I, I would agree with that statement. But you're also comparing a, a period of time where – Tiger basketball was a different animal in the in the seventies, the eighties, um, probably more so the eighties that than they are now, right? Consistently, if you want to think it that way. But I think if you look at UCLA, the last thirty years, are they still the animal that they were back when? Uh, well, I don't even know what year Wooden was there. Don't lie, I make up a number there, but the sixties and seventies. Yeah, like, I mean, they're obviously not the same program now as they were then. Are they good? Sure. In the last 30 years, yeah, they would probably check the box of being a good team. But I don't think they'd be a blue blood in, in the same comp as lifetime versus in the last 30 years, right? I just think that's a – I think it's a conversation that is – it's a red herring conversation that that is – didn't seem doesn't fit with the conversations that have been happening about the basketball program over the last couple of days right it's a it's a conversation it's a moving the goalpost kind of conversation that that to me is not helpful to kind of understanding like the feelings of penny hardaway the comments that he made the reaction publicly you know the fans that kind of stuff to me it's just a it's a red herring conversation because that's not like when Penny Hardaway, in the last seven years, going into his seventh year as the, as the head coach of this program, from the beginning, the expectations were set by him of we're going, going to be competing for national championships, we're going to be competing for Final Fours, competing for – we're going to be in the tournament consistently. And unfortunately, that has not happened. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, like, is it okay to then – critique based on the expectations that were set by the head coach or are we being gaslit to say well we shouldn't have had those expectations anyway y'all know penny hardo was just talking like he was just talking he's just talking out of his ass like that that's silly like that's a silly thing to say well i, think. I, think I also don't think ask. yeah i don't think you also have to rely and reflect back on what penny said look at the classes the classes themselves have been talented and the the schedule you play 
they're okay. You you should have been better for what the teams you play and the talent you had. You should have been better. I think that's straightforward, right? Uh, you don't lose to USF at home when you're up by 20. You don't lose to Rice. I don't know if we've ever lost to Rice, and I, I don't mean that sarcastically. I, I legitimately mean I don't know if we've ever lost to Rice. And I, maybe that's naive on my part, but I think Pastor have we ever lost, lost to Rice? Rice? Yeah, Pastor lost at Rice in like 2010. But is it? But is the critique that was about, so Rain Man of me? I'm about to look this up. That was wild. I can't believe you had. He that. does this stuff, dude. It's yeah, wild. that's wild. I but but it. is the conversation? Is the critique about Penny Hardaway the results of of like what he's achieved? The 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 overall record, the overall like achievement of going to the NCAA tournament, or is it about the constant chaos that seems to have fo- that follows him every single year? Right? Like how how much longer? Like how how much longer is the excuse of he's a new head coach, never coached college basketball before? Like how long do those? Um, conversations uh, like how long do, until those kind of are off the table, right? Like of it's not an excuse that can be used anymore because it feels like if you are learning and you are, le- if you're learning on the job and you go year to year, roster to roster, new roster to new roster, and it's the same situation every single year, roster issues, yeah. locker room issues, substitution issue, like uh, rotation issues, like all those different things are happening every single year. And there doesn't seem to be any kind of movement from that. Isn't that where the critique has been? Not, not necessarily yeah. in the fact that, yo, like, Hey bro, like you're doing everything perfectly yet. Your teams just suck. <laughs> right? Like that's not what's happening. Yeah. yeah. It's you. By see the way, these- uh, February 19th, 2011 inside Tudor field house in Houston, I Texas. We lost. 67 to 52. That is, to that is Rice wild. House. Man, well done. <laughs> You're very proud of yourself, Art. That was yeah, awesome. That I was am. Good. That was actually not a bad basketball team either. That was the team that lost by two to Arizona. Yeah. In the uh, the first round, Wesley Witherspoon Crazy. missed that. Wasn't that? Uh, is that our boy? DeAndre DeAndre Ayton's team. 2011? No. 2011, yeah, that math ain't math at home. But uh, who was, be, what was the big dude for Arizona that year? Chase Budinger? No. That's more mathematically probably the – Anyway, Kenny, going back to your point, um, you know, I don't know if people really care about the drama stuff. I think that's just an, an easy thing to talk about, right? I don't know if they really care. As long as you win, like you can have drama as long as you win. And I think if you look back on the schedule and you look at – you know, there's games A, B, C, and D. You're like, could have won those. Well, we dicked around. And I don't think it's because Penny's a new head coach. I, I just think Penny is what he is as a head coach, right? I don't I don't think he's going to change the way he is. I think he's going to run these, these substitutions that we think are weird. And although they are weird, they seem more effective than they are not effective, right? I mean, the winning tells you that naturally. Derek um, Williams is who I was thinking of. Derek Williams, okay. That's another top pick. So you weren't far off there. Um no, I, I you know, I don't think people really care about the chaos stuff. Just just win the games, baby. That's all we but, want. Just but win, is it the chaos? Baby. But is it, is it the chaos that's creating the losses? That's the that's what I think that's the question that that would need to be answered. Like the chaos that's happening, the locker room issues, like is that what's creating the 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 losses, the the lack of focus in a game against Rice or in a second half against USF, like or UCF, UCF, no USF. Like is USF. that is that the issue, the the chaos? No, I think the issue is not having Malcolm on the court in the final minutes. Um, that's probably the issue, personally. But except for when he comes out in press availabilities <laughs> and after the games and says this is what's happening after a loss. Like if he was saying that after a win, like if he'd come out and after the Virginia game and, you know, talked about, well, you yeah. Wouldn't. but I'm just saying like, these are, we're reporting on the things that he's talking about in the post game availabilities. Like no, ain't nobody yeah. making up shit. Like ain't nobody making up roster yeah. issues. 
Like after losses, he's coming out and saying, "Yeah, man, I can't even play part of my my. I have to, I have guys on this team that I can't play groups play of guys together. together. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. Like, he, of course he does need to get out of his own way. Of yeah. course that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't. Yeah, I think we're getting deep into it. But also this year, you had these were grown ass men playing basketball. Like, right? I get he's a head coach, but like, how much can you? If you literally have dudes that refuse to play together, like that's crazy. There's not a whole much you can do about it. Yeah. It's crazy. If that's the case, man, I, I I don't even want to speculate as to who those players were. But if that's the case, the fact that they saw the floor moving forward is crazy it's, to me. Yeah, that's yes. I agree with that. But again, I think based on everything we've seen, that this it's going to be a different locker room this year. Really having these dudes, so. I th- I think that is really going to pay dividends having these guys here to start the whole summer. I hope so, man. I am. I, can I just and I'll just say this. I I know I've been speaking a lot, and I apologize, but I just I really having I I go to the availabilities. I'm at every game. I'm at whatever they the opportunities they have to to be around the team. It is exhausting covering the <laughs> Memphis basketball program. Like I can't, and I just want to be, I just want to be honest about it. Covering Memphis football, the, the aura around it, the energy around it, the, even after losses, it's just different. And, and I, I just, as whatever that, whatever that sounds like, whatever that comes across as I'm just speaking like how I feel after a season is over. It is exhausting covering the Memphis basketball program. And maybe it's because there's more eyes on it. Maybe it's whatever, but it is exhausting. And I really genuinely believe as a company at BCM, as a guy who's that at every game and at every availability that I can possibly be at, like I can't tell you how desperately I want to cover a team that is successful. Like, it is so much better for us. Like, so this idea that we want Penny to fail is wild and, and just ridiculous. absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Like yeah. the storylines write themselves for a company like Bluff City Media. Penny Hardaway, the favorite son of the of the city, comes back to lead the program to great heights as a basketball program. That is an unbelievable story. And I want to tell that story. I so desperately do, but it hasn't happened yet. We'll see you in March, Kenny. We'll see you in March. All right, fellas. Well over an hour into this thing, and we still haven't even gotten to our cheers yet. Let's go. So tonight, we raise our glasses to Faye Hardaway. Let's go, Miss Faye. Let's go, Miss Hardaway. Ms. Faye, who is in remission Complete from remission. throat cancer. Penny tweeted or Instagram that out earlier today. She got to ring the bell. Let's go. So we're cheersing Faye for kicking ass and saying F you to cancer. Yeah. Man. So F shout cancer, out to Miss Faye. Yeah. All right. She really said F you to cancer, dude. She rang that bell. That's the F you bell. It's the F you bell. Right. Okay. All right, Timothy. Let's get into this uh, metal museum. Ferris <laughs> forty-five. Oh Lord. This is a, an amber ale of all amber ales. Very amber. Very amber. Um, the metal museum's forty-fifth anniversary. Oh, that's what forty-five meant. Yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. What? No, I, I, I'm gonna be real honest with you. It's been a long time since I've taken a science class. I was like, maybe. Oh, maybe you're iron, thinking like number forty-five on the periodic table. Yeah, okay. not the case. I see what you're. I see what you're going at. I see what you're going. Not at. the case. Um, I like this can. Not bad. Definitely not bad. I'm gonna pull up the it's gonna pull up the beer drive here. It's got a different feel to it. 
Um, it, do you see a different feel? It yeah, feels I don't the know. exact same as all the other cans I've ever touched. They're stickers. Here's a closer different. up. I do like the uh, the swirlingness in the background. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Gives me a real it's Ohio some, State about vibe. It. And oh, with, with that red and gray. So it, it's it's a decent can to say the least. Uh, but I don't love it for me the red and the gray color scheme for me, but I do get the gray the Ferris. I'm getting iron vibes, so I get the gray. Yeah, um, I like. Or I'm steel. liking the 45, the way it's in there. Just that bubbly text. I don't know why. It's like the Memphis Sounds font. Mm, it's an okay can. Yeah, yeah. You mentioning Ohio State, those. I didn't mean to throw you off. I'm going to give it a 6 2 can. Up. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a decent can. Yeah. That feels right there. On I'll, I'll go a little higher because I do like the bubble font. And the uh, the swirls are getting me. I want to go like six four, right there. Well, six four. Six, this was good though. Four. I'm not uh, admittedly not the biggest amber ale guy, but I did enjoy this. What is that? No. Um. As always, we talked a little too long before we started, so it did start to get warm. At about the mm -hmm. 15 minute mark of the show. So I've been about an hour and three minutes of probably room temp, which takes a little bit off of it. I needed it to be again. I think at ice cold, I could probably oh yeah knock out knock out two of these bad boys. So for that, I mean I'm gonna i I'm gonna say like a six eight on this amber ale. Okay. Not being a big amber ale guy. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I do agree. Mine was pretty cold, though. So um, the colder, the better. I think that's a general understanding. Like, just a general statement, right? Always. Um, mine was cold, and it was good. It, it, it did get a little warmer towards the very end with, like, the last sip. Yeah. You got it's, that hard to, it's hard to combat that, though. That last sip yeah, tends yeah. to always be warm. Um, I think if you were to put two of these in front of me, I would definitely drink two of them. So uh, I'm going to put it like a 7-1. I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good for an amber. Not as good as when we had not that long ago. I don't remember what it was. So it couldn't have been that good, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to we remember. Had it, I feel like uh, we're running out of beer. Irish Kabai, maybe? Oh, yeah. It is good. It is Irish getting Kabai. tough out there. Why? That had to have... How long ago was that? Oh, that was a red ale. That's not even what I was thinking of. That was episode 73, and we're on 81, so... Oh gosh, you're talking about almost 10 weeks ago. That was two months ago, Timothy. That was a long time ago. We are running out of beer. I do, you know, admittedly, I need to go back and listen to episodes 40 through 66 because for some reason I have lost you have our no beer scores and what beer we did there. No, I don't. Wow. Um, so I need to go back and listen through all 26 episodes because we have beer in our fridge that we don't know if we've done yet or not. And that sounds silly because people are like, what do you mean? You've never had that beer? And I'm like, we have 81 episodes under our belt here. Well, that doesn't even and count then, the 22 that we had under the exactly. former. Well, yeah. Talk about worst experiences of my experiences. <laughs> There's a lot of beers that have been Kenny's had. not listening. Okay. Kenny's not listening anymore. Uh I thought he was choosing to filter us. Your glasses are so reflective. It's wild. I can't even see your eyes. It's just. Sorry. I, there we go. That's my, why I literally choose not to wear my glasses. I will be wearing my glasses at work throughout the day. I get home on Mondays and I take my glasses off, put my contacts in for the show. Just because I, I don't should, like just I should dedication. Well, listen, that's my eyes. My eyes are still hurting from the beach. And so the ocean water. And so yeah, from the sea you, know, you, you should close your eyes before sea hit you in the face. And then it's a good point. May not hurt. It's a fine, it's a fine point, but I apologize for wearing glasses. I'm sorry. Can you imagine the, just the very tip point of a sea hitting you right in the eye socket? Is that what yeah, that would no. think that would be terrible. You know, that's how you battle a shark is poke him in the eyes. I know my daughter told me that about 75 times while you're on the, in the ocean. Is that why your eyes hurt? Because like, you kept 
She's like, go, go for the, the go for the eyes and go for the gills. That's what you kept telling me. She's not wrong. She's smart not wrong. Girl. She's smart. Smart girl. You should ask her how you battle a sea dew that's coming at you. <laughs> She's yeah. like, you need to figure it out because you lost. <laughs> Uh, all right, fellas. It's Let's been a pleasure. See, before I lose it, Timothy, we need a full report on uh, beers forty-three through sixty-six by this time next week. Also, wouldn't hate to get that beer bracket released. That's what I was exactly what I was going to say. We need I that. I mean, I can, and we need the beer bracket. I, I, I had the beer bracket. I can literally show you the beer bracket. I just never put it out. Yeah. Lies. What do you mean? Uh, literally, I will pull it up right now. I'll send you guys a text right now of the beer bracket. All right. Well, hey, we may have a beer bracket coming out soon. Tune in next week. Come with the cold beer. Stay for the hot takes. Peace. If you enjoyed this episode of Tigers Untapped, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Like and subscribe at Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports.